ignorance is bliss, but I'd still take the red pill. And I would want to see the storm coming before it got here so I could be at least as prepared as I could. So this is another FBO study report and this concerns um, DHS, security, disaster preparedness, and um, it kind of runs through a lot. It's a lot to wrap your head around when you put it all together. But um, I just I can't imagine making this shorter because it's all related. Um, you know, there's going to be a few odds and ends that are just business as usual stuff, but not a lot on this one. So we'll start off with DHS. What's DHS up to? DHS is really into water purification services, um, water treatment. They're DHS, Department of Homeland Security. I mean, we know we've, that they've dived into lots of areas that they don't belong in, but they are the ones hiring for wastewater treatment plant operators in some areas now, specifically in areas that I have nailed down as target areas through these solicitations. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, DHS is ordering lots of helicopter repairs and parts. That's pretty normal. Their crap breaks all the time, I guess. But um, it's it's just pretty interesting. So for those of you concerned about immigration. Don't worry because they are buying horses and they just ordered 40 tons of hay and they're ordering border, trying to find boarding facilities for all these horses in California, Texas, and New Mexico, but also in Utah and Colorado. Um, let's see. They're ordering mid-endurance unmanned aircraft systems, intelligence gathering, target surveillance and reconnaissance services for in, within the US. Um, private operators of these things is what they're looking for. They're, they're contracting for people to run and operate these. Found that interesting. They're fixing up and doing repairs to FEMA temporary housing trailers, um, specifically in Alabama, Mississippi, um, Arkansas. Let's see. Uh, what else are they doing? Information management and research support services was the solicitation header. And they're doing virtual library management and development, hard copy library, documentation center, database development and management support, country conditions, electronics tools, internet and internet database, development and management support, um, research new software for streamlining operations, training. They're basically creating a big database of everybody. That's what they're doing. It says so in the solicitation. All the people in the United States. What do they want that for? I'm sure it's just to be able to tell who's legal and who's not, right? Because they don't have that information with social security cards. FEMA is going to need lots and lots of laptops because they just developed a new quote one 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 project and they won't say what it is it was unspecific other than they need lots and lots and lots of laptops so notebooks notebook laptops let's see DHS remote sensing to support incident management and homeland security with a ceiling of 50 million in private services and well that's pretty much what it says it is they want to be able to send people up in aircraft 
that now this is outside of the unmanned private run aircraft, right? They want to send people up there that can do all kinds of targets and stuff, and they want these people to start in July. More FEMA housing inspection services, but this is not for their trailers. This is for private residences. Now I can understand the inspection of temporary housing units that are owned and run by FEMA as posted in prior solicitations, but this is for private homes and they have a closed date on this that they want people that will go around and do this in July, August 2011 is the closed date. This one just is kind of out there, but I was just wondering why the hell is DHS buying bulk women's bras and panties to be sent to El Paso, El Paso Texas? Since when do those items fall outside of what an employee is supposed to provide on their own? But they want lots and lots and lots of bras and panties of all sizes. Huh. Anyway, so back to more fun stuff. We've got 12 million in security upgrades for a DHS ICE facility in Brush, Colorado that they want to, it's a detainment center, and they are putting over 12 million dollars worth of security upgrades. Now, I guess, you know, the security upgrade stuff for CCTVs and all that kind of stuff are pretty expensive, so maybe that's not too far out of the norm, other than it's a detainment facility, and has anyone seen any of these detainment facilities with people actually in them? Just a question mark. In addition to that, there was a separate solicitation for 90 miles away. DHS ICE, yes. Contractor-owned, contractor-operated detention facility in Denver Metro. Okay, 90 miles away from the Brush, Colorado one. Now, the Brush, Colorado one didn't say what... It didn't give a whole lot of specifics on, you know, the detainment facility itself, but this one actually said that it can detain more than 500 people, which isn't a lot when you look at the size of the Denver metro area. But, again, they're sitting empty right now, and we already have jails, but they want... Private contractor security services, <laughs> services to buy this facility and operate it under DHS, taking orders from them. Now, doesn't that just, I don't know, that just rubs me wrong. They want to man it with civilians, private run, and they want it in civilian hands by July 2011. So that's all interesting, right? Then you've got DHS private security services. Okay, now we did the alert on the Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri. Since then, they have put out a couple more. Two of them, I didn't even red flag because they were... They read pretty normal. Now that doesn't mean that they aren't something, but they there weren't any red flags for me really, even though it came out of the Department of Homeland Security. But the one for Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, and Kansas definitely red flagged me. And then they put out another one that read almost exactly the same way, and that was for Virginia. And that also struck me because of other things that they're doing in Virginia. If you watched the FBO video already on leasing and warehouses, um, you'll see that they're getting a lot of warehouse space and stuff in Virginia. And then you add that to, let me scroll down, um, FEMA also put out, I think it was FEMA, it was Homeland Security, put out a solicitation 
for transportation services to haul commodities for disasters, and then in parentheses, and non-disasters, right. But they wanted this specifically for Virginia, and they wanted over 240 semis on call that had to be able to turn around and get to these locations in Virginia within 4, 6, and 12 hours of a disaster happening. <coughs> And um, it really bugged me. It's a long solicitation, and there's a lot of detail in it. So I'm going to, when I get the links up, I would highly recommend checking that one out. Sorry, I'm chain smoking today. Um, so that kind of just made it double creepy for me. And beyond that, with the Iowa, Nebraska... Missouri and Kansas solicitation. Here's a little side note. They also posted a separate solicitation that I had to dig for, but um, they want PSOs in Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa specifically for lakes and parks. They posted the solicitation on March 11th, 2011. And they want these people to walk around and protect all the lakes in those four states. And I'm not kidding, all the lakes in those four states. So... When you add that to the original, the creepy factor goes up. So I red flagged that. And um, I'm sorry, but if there's PSOs being put into four states, which raised a red flag for me, it didn't for other people. That's fine. But when they're also going in, to specifically protect lakes and parks in those four states and they're doing warehouse buildups in those four states and they're moving national databases and archives into those four states and if you want to take it a step further look at the dredging and what states they're doing the deepening projects in and you can go all day long and tell me that it's not going to hurt the fish, but it is. If you're digging up a river by over four stories deeper than it was, that is not to save fish. It's not. And what do they need? I, I can't possibly imagine, even if they wanted to move barges in there and were deepening it for these barges, which generally aren't that deep anyway it's not adding up for me it's not adding up for me and they want all of this done and in place by July or August of 2011 <sighs> creepy factor and I'm really trying not to put my opinion out there too much. And you can totally disagree with me, and that's fine. But facts are facts. And when you look at all the facts and put them together, it doesn't paint a happy picture. Um, let's see. DHS is doing security upgrades um, at a lot of facilities. They don't say what kind of facilities they are. They're DHS facilities. Military bases, um, I have actually, I've only come across three now, but they were all inland. They weren't like coastal Navy bases or anything like that. Um, in fact, one of them was in Colorado. Military bases are ordering loudspeakers, and we're talking like 14 footers with 360 output hand horns, speaker arrays that can mount on vehicles to be able to inform families and the military in the event of a disaster. Um, 
So you've got all that going on. And then the EPA, well, well let's get into disaster preparedness a little bit since we're already pretty much there. Um, the EPA is ordering emergency and rapid response services. And this is specifically for Region 3, which is Delaware, District of Columbia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia. And it is for in the event of an emergency, but it says over and over again, this is just for preparation only. This is just for preparation only. This is just for preparation only. Uh-huh. That's the only area they're doing it in, and I just can't imagine why it would be that area only. But, um, they basically want people to be able to come in, and it's not even for, like, testing for radiation or anything crazy like that. It's to help people move out. It's to help specific people get out. And that came out of the EPA, which is under DHS, Region 3 Contacts Branch. So, that was kind of nutty. And then into other disaster preparedness. Um, there's, let's see, they're ordering a whole bunch of lumber and plywood and veneer. Um, lots of water more water, water purification services, um, disaster blankets, and we're not talking about, there There was that original disaster blankets posted a couple months ago. There's been about six of them since then, too, that have been relatively small in comparison, but there's still hundreds of thousands each. Um, Various fuels in support of disaster relief. Most of us have seen that. Um, more blankets. More fuels. The underwater body bags that we knew about. The prepackaged commercial meals that we knew about. And then I got to read you this one. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which there's been a lot of stuff for DHS going out through the Army Corps of Engineers, okay? But listen to where this is. Omaha. Specific. Nowhere else in the United States. Omaha specific. Sources sought for security disaster infrastructure construction actions. The work will consist of time-sensitive construction operations and maintenance activities such as facilities, utilities, infrastructure, water and sanitation systems, electrical systems, natural gas and other energy systems, fences, lighting, roads, and site development. Um, national security or public interest related construction examples include security protection of access control points, chemical, biological, radioactive, CBR projects, which are all run by DHS, um, structural hardening of walls and roofs, installation of blast ballistic resistant windows and doors, landscaping to achieve standoff distances, Installation of security equipment such as cameras, intrusion detection system locks, fragment, retention film, etc. Again, this is Nebraska specific. Time sensitive disaster or emergency assistance construction activities. Examples include flood control and water diversion projects, embankments, channel alignments, flood control structures. Supports all federal agencies would include nearly unlimited work phases including construction, restoration, repair, enhancement, maintenance, demolition of facilities, utilities, debris cleanup, earthwork, uh, real property systems, infrastructure requirements, and all related work to accomplish the same mission. Incidental support for ecological, environmental, and munitions response. Examples include Time-sensitive construction, implementation, demolition, repair. 
emergency response and operations and maintenance activities for environmental engineering and construction needs and time-sensitive munitions and explosives response actions. And then it goes into this RFI is um, basically, you know, blah, 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 don't, you go ahead and submit your response now, but respondents will not be notified of the results and debriefings will not be available. Um, so basically, go ahead and submit your vendor application for this, but they're not going to hire you until shit happens. So that was really interesting. And again, when you add all of this in with the warehouses and in those specific areas, um, I'll just say it's interesting.